Shauna here from Dancing Raven Studio. Welcome to Acrylic Painting 101 Basics for Beginners. This is the second last video for this course, though I do have a bonus video that I will be adding in. I've just added color studies into my paint journey. I have to tell you, it's transformative. We're going to do a color study. You can see I did two. In fact, I did a third one underneath for something else. Uh, it's just a small painting. It doesn't take much time, but is packed with so much information so that your painting will be more successful as a result. Because how we see the color when we're mixing it and how it looks when we put it up on the board sometimes is two different things. Grab your paint tools and let's get going. You can see that I have the drawing just done with raw umber, just the outline. And I'm coming in as I'm just setting the stage for this color study. A color study basically is about trying out all of the colors you've mixed and seeing if you actually like them. This color study took me about a half an hour to do and I'm just slowly building it up. And I made a yellow string of cad yellow light with raw umber as the value string. You can find the image to work from on my website. The link is below the video or at dancingravenstudio.ca backslash blog. And I'm coming in and I'm placing some of the dark that I'm seeing just in the crevices and on the under plane side of the lemon. You can see that building that up. Here is the darkest part, well, mostly the darkest part. Right underneath the lemon in the cast shadow, there will be a darker occlusion shadow. But in the background, what I've done is I've just used white paint. I had photographed this all on white, and I just thought for simplicity's sake, I would do this white. The final painting that we will be doing for Acrylic Painting 101 Basics for Beginners is a 13 by 18 centimeters, which works out to five by seven inches. So when I was creating the color study, then I wanted it to be significantly smaller. The color study size is seven by 12 centimeters, which works out to two and three quarters by four and three quarter inches. and I continue to build up. And you'll notice that I'm even moving my brush in the roundness of the lemon. I want to create that illusion of roundness. I'm coming in and softening it. and coming in and working on the lemon slice. Now the lemon slice is interesting because it's backlit just enough and has some really interesting glow in the segments. So when you're thinking about a color study, you're wanting to put your best colors out there. Now I've done color studies where I've not been very happy with the colors and I've rearranged my colors and then did another second color study. So again, coming to the background, and you'll notice that there's tape on each side of this color study because there was a color study from something else and another study underneath with metal leaf that I was playing with. Doing a small color study allows you not to fuss and worry and, and fret about it. You're just getting the information in there. I'm not gonna do a ton of details. 
but I am going to ensure that I am trying to capture it as close as possible. I am moving back and forth, standing back to see both of them from a distance so that I can see if I've got the values right, I've got the shapes right, what needs to be changed. You don't see that in, in how I edited the video because that just would end up adding so much more time. So we're coming to the nice light bright area of the rind on the slice. Trying to create the shape. Then I'm going to come in here. We have some reflected light fl coming off of the round lemon onto the slice and you can really see it in that small area of the rind where it's not as dark. Getting the segments in so that I know where they are. And we are about halfway through this video. So I am obviously going to spend a little more time fussing with things and making sure that I have a good representation. I'm using my Dakota brush that I like. It's quite hard and scrubby and I really like that. It's got some gumption to it. So the darkest area is right there underneath the lemon, but you can see as it moves away from the lemon that the reflected light is bouncing back and we're not as dark. So the cast shadow is even changing values, which is really important to remember. I'm lightening this area up because I've stood back and went, oh, that seems too dark. Let's get across the top of the lemon slice. I generally use the Robert Simmons Simply Simmons brush to soften edges and so forth, but I had a little paint on here and worked with it that way too. Across the top again, flip the brush around, get paint from the other side, clean the edge up. There is a little sort of glow of an orangey yellow that's just underneath right there and it's kind of fun to put it in place. Now I'm coming for a second pass on this dark heart. And I'm looking and, and paying attention to how it is sorting itself out. And I'm just gonna come and soften those edges. bit more paint in and soften it into place. Then I realize it needs to be a little darker on the bottom and I just soften that out and spread that out. Yeah, so here we go. The darker part is right underneath that crevice shadow or the occlusion shadow or core shadow. And I'm just creating as much as I can the lemon as I'm seeing it. I'm not using small brushes. I'm just using the same size brush through the whole thing. So I'm not worried about perfection. I'm just doing a color study and I want it done well enough so that I can get all the information I need off of it to see if I'm happy with the colors that I've mixed. some of that light, blending it in. Putting in 
and some of the highlights that I'm seeing. And I'm just sort of turning my brush and doing it on the corner. And in goes the finger to smush it down. So it's just slowly building up and blending in to get the shape more correct. Take your time, and but you're not so much time that you're going to be here forever. And here we are. To receive the handout for each of the lessons, head on over to my website, dancingravenstudio.ca. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next art video.